of all the piercings named after chess pieces, the rook is my favorite. Who wrote this crap? The rook piercing is a fairly new piercing. There's a magazine in 1992 called Body Play, which featured this new artist named Eric Dakota. Now, Eric Dakota had three brand new piercings in this magazine. The first one was the industrial piercing. The second one was the doth piercing. And the third one is the one we're talking about today, the rook piercing. The placement of the rook piercing is essential to get right. If it's going too much of an angle, too shallow, or too deep, it won't heal properly. Now, looking at these ears, there's a couple different shapes of rooks you can see. Now, the one I'm pointing to right now is not the proper anatomy for this piercing. As you can see, there's no ridge, there's nothing to grab a hold of. It will most likely reject and grow out. So if you have a shallow rook like this, don't get it pierced. Now the other two rooks, as you can see, one has room for two piercings, the other one has room for one. Now the room for one is typically what most people are gonna have an anatomy for. When we look at this one here, you're gonna see it's tucked in a little bit. Now when you're looking in a mirror, you're probably not gonna see the piercing as well as the people who are standing around you. They will all be able to see this. But if you need that justification looking in the mirror, your new piercing, you might need to take a picture of it. Now looking at the other one, you can see the rook is very long. There's lots of areas we can put multiple piercings in here. In this particular piercing, we did two parallel piercings. Well, they're almost parallel because you can see there's a slight curve and we follow the curvature of the ear. It is super important to have it deep enough all the way down at the bottom. See where it almost comes out of the bottom down here, but not too far underneath where the beads are putting pressure on the back of the conch. And you need it to be high up enough on the rook so that there's enough tissue to stay anchored in. These are two properly placed rook piercings. The question everyone always asks, how painful is the rook? Well, let's look at the painometer. I really expected higher on that painometer as well. But the painometer is saying it's around the medium. The reason we're saying medium is because this piercing varies in pain from person to person and from piercer to piercer. A newer piercer who doesn't use quality needles, quality jewelry, is gonna go slower, and that jewelry's gonna be very painful going through. That's why it's gonna be in the middle to the higher range. And if you have a quality piercer who uses a good technique, sharp needles, and jewelry that's not gonna stick or grab, it's gonna be super, super easy. Generally, not too painful of a piercing. <laughs> The healing time on the rook varies from person to person, but on average, I would say expect three to six months. Jewelry options for the rook is pretty simple. Start off with a curved barbell. Now, if you want to add some gems, a little fanciness, some color to it, you're totally welcome to do that, but stick to the curved barbell because a ring will stick out of your ear a little bit. It's going to rotate pulling the crusties in. You've heard me say this before. So stick with a curved barbell and when it's healed up, then switch to the ring. Common problems for the rook piercing are going to be sleeping on it, touching with dirty hands, and earphones that are pressing up against it. A lot of times earbuds shouldn't interfere with this. And if it is, those are some huge earbuds. But listen to your body. If you're putting pressure on there and it hurts, you're doing damage and it's gonna take longer to heal. So those are the most common problems. Keep your hands off and don't sleep on it. Besides earlobes, the Rook is one of my favorite starter piercings. It heals nice. Earbuds and earphones generally don't interfere with it. You have lots of jewelry options. And a lot of people think that just the outer rim of the ear would be an easier heal, but it's not. The outside rim of the ear, I see on average six months to a year to heal. This one should be healed up in three to six months. So if you're thinking about getting this piercing, 
I encourage you. My general thoughts on this piercing is it's a great piercing as long as you get a good experience. Getting a good experience means seeking out a quality piercer. So don't shop for price, shop for quality. A uh, quality piercer is going to give you a better experience because it'll be less painful, it'll heal nicer, and you're generally going to get much higher quality jewelry. And higher quality jewelry lasts much longer than the cheap stuff out there. So, do your homework with that. And another little tip for you is if you have a camera phone, take a picture of both your rooks. If you got one side done and the other side not, you will be able to tell when the swelling's gone down. Generally, when the swelling's gone all the way down, you're able to change your jewelry. So, keep in mind if you have a curved barbell, check your beads every day to make sure they stay tight with clean hands. And of course, watch more Piercing with Scott.